Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1043. You've been warned! Hello Manaka Matachi, this is Joy Girl. Something that I've wanted to discuss for quite some time now is the ever illustrious mystery of the Will of D. And although all of the recent reveals of all the lore and mysteries haven't really touched on this topic specifically, it is still a topic that I have started to think about more as a result of all of these new reveals, and I do think it's quite timely for us to start thinking about this mystery as well. But before we begin, please do hit that subscribe button because I would be immensely grateful and it also means that you get provided with frequent One Piece discussions. Now this is probably the longest unexplained mystery in the series, maybe only second to the question of what actually is the One Piece. Because this has been a point of curiosity for me as I'm sure it has been for many others as well, since the very first chapter when we were introduced to our protagonist Monkey D. Luffy and we didn't know what that D stood for. And now this prompted many questions according to Oda, which he finally answered in SBS Volume 8, except that he didn't really answer the question at all, and all he did was tease us even further by responding that he couldn't actually tell us yet, and that for the time being we should just pay no attention to it. But of course he didn't actually make it any easier for us to actually ignore this mystery, especially in Drum Island where Dr. Kuraha formally introduced us to this big mystery and to this idea of the will of D. And from the piece of Dr. Kuraha's dialogue in that chapter, there are a few things that can be made out, especially when we also put it alongside other pieces of information that we've been able to gather around the Will of D throughout the series. For example, and first of all, it's the idea that it's not just the initial D that's important. We now know it as the Will of D, meaning that it has something to do with will or willpower, and because of that one word, it's easy for us to associate it with another core theme within the series, which is of course inherited will. And that idea of inherited will has obviously been a really core theme of the series ever since Goldie Roger's speech, which is significant because Roger is the first character outside of Luffy that we found out to also share this D initial in his name. So then putting these together and thinking of it along the lines of the inherited will of D, this then suggests that this is something that is carried on or passed on between generations, you know, possibly within a family. And this fact or this hypothesis could then also be corroborated by the fact that all of Luffy's known family members also share the D initial. Ace also is the son of two individuals who also have the D initial in their names. Law revealed as well that he and his family were also members of this D clan. And this was actually something essentially confirmed for us through Jaguar D Soul in the Ennius Lobby arc because one piece of information that he was able to impart us with was that he wasn't sure what this D initial actually meant but he did know that all the members of his family shared this initial. And this revelation that Saul, as a giant, also had this initial was really quite curious because that meant that other races, aside from just humans, could also have the Will of D. What's even more curious, in my opinion at least, is that the Will of D hasn't been explicitly connected to Joy Boy or to the Ancient Kingdom in the series. But it does certainly still seem like all of these mysteries are still related and connected together and especially have to do with whatever happened during the Void Century. Especially given that Robin asked about both the D Clan and the Void Century to Rayleigh when they met at Saobodi, and we do know that Joy Boy and the Ancient Kingdom are certainly related to the Void Century. Now what I find interesting is that at the beginning of the Wano arc, I would have said that we were still ages away from finding out what any of this means. But now given the extreme speed at which Oda is just divulging information, you know, about Joy Boy, about Sun God Nika and Luffy's connections to Joy Boy and Nika, the revelation that Zunisha was Joy Boy's crewmate, the existence of a Lunarian race, and then Luffy's devil fruit as well, there is also now a greater possibility possibility that we'll get more information about the Will of D as well. And this really seems to be the case, especially because of Law's little side mission at Onigashima. You know, earlier in the raid, we found him discover another poneglyph in the castle, and we saw him wonder to himself what the meaning of the Will of D is, as well as him affirming that finding out this mystery will be his goal. And this was a scene that's always interested me. In fact, all of the poneglyphs at Wano has really interested me. But because of 
the relatively new piece of information that it's the road ponic glyphs that point us to the direction of Laugh Tale. It seems like the focus and the intrigue surrounding ponic glyphs have shifted almost entirely to just the road ponic glyphs. But I've always thought that if we want to find out more information about all of the mysteries and all of the lore, then it really is the standard ponic glyphs that seem to contain this sort of information. And it's these type of ponic glyphs that are more important in that respect. I mean, for example, it was the poneglyph in Alabasta that contained information about Pluton, and then the poneglyph at Skypea contained information about Poseidon, and we know that the poneglyph that the Oharan scholars had in their possession contained information, contained the name of the ancient kingdom, and of course the one at Fishman Island is actually how we found out and were introduced to Joy Boy for the first time in the series. So the fact that we've uncovered so many poneglyphs both in the Whole Cake Island arc and now here at Wano, this has really been low-key driving me crazy because we still haven't deciphered what any of these poneglyphs mean, you know, what sort of intel they contain. I mean, can you imagine just the sheer volume and type of information dump that we're going to receive when we finally get to translate all of these poneglyphs? I mean, given that information about both Pluton and Poseidon were contained in two of the poneglyphs, surely one of the poneglyphs we've found so far also contains information about Uranus, and I also feel like information about the Will of D isn't out of the question of being explained in one of the other poneglyphs. You know, maybe even the one that Law found. Because in chapter 996, which is the chapter where Law discovers the poneglyph, we see him have a flashback to a conversation he had with Robin, where she reveals she doesn't know what the Will of D means, but that she is intrigued. And he asked her whether the only way of finding out this information would be through finding the road poneglyphs. Robin agreed. So when he finds the normal blue one inside the castle, we see Law think to himself that he's found the wrong one. Now it does obviously make sense that finding the road poneglyphs would result in them also finding out the meaning of the Will of D because this is how you find Laugh Tale and the One Piece, but it does seem like that the road poneglyph would only be useful in that respect, in helping them find Laugh Tale and helping them find the One Piece, not necessarily containing the information about the Will of D directly on that poneglyph. And so could this conversation have actually been a misdirect? And could the meaning of the Will of D, or at least some information about it, be contained in one of the poneglyphs, and maybe in that poneglyph? I mean, surely I'm not the only one who has been constantly wondering why on earth none of these inscriptions have been deciphered for us yet. I mean, come on, I know that all of you guys are just as One Piece obsessed as I am. But I do suppose that the greater question that keeps everyone up is more along the lines of what is the meaning of the Will of D. And there really are just so many ways that this can go, especially the way that Oda has told his story the D could be representative of so many different things. One of the few other pieces of information or clue that we have is what Rosinante told Law that members of the D family of the D clan are known to be the enemies of the gods. And in that sense, one idea is that the D could be thought to stand for devil or demon because those words are natural antonyms to the word god. And it would also fit with the concept of a devil fruit and there does certainly seem to be a strong theme of devil or demon present in the series and it doesn't even necessarily have to mean a bad thing or be used in a negative way. I mean, think of Zoro and Sanji, even with his Diablo Jamba. And now Robin has also really embraced her devil, her demon epithet. But in saying that, I do have to say that it does seem like Rocinante's intel was quite heavily biased. He says that this is something that he heard back in his hometown. And although we're not given a timeline to ascertain what he means by his hometown, where he was, where he heard these stuff, it's possible or probably even more likely that this is stuff that he heard back when he was a world noble. Otherwise, it's hard to imagine how normal citizens would have been aware of the will of D of the D clan, especially because it seems to be so hush-hush and kept under the radar. So this description, the enemy of the gods, seems to be a very biased account to demonize the D clan by the celestial dragons. And you know, paint these members, the D clan, as the bad guys. Hence the old wife tale in telling kids that they're going to be gobbled up by these D-wielding monsters if they're bad. So another idea and a more fitting idea that the D has become associated 
with is the idea of dreams. And it's easy to see why both the themes of inherited will and dreams are mentioned by Roger in his infamous speech. And they really are both extremely poignant and important themes present in the story. And also every D clan member that we've met throughout this series seems to harbor some sort of dream, whether they be positive like we've seen for most of the characters or whether they be as dark and negative like in the case of Blackbeard and presumably Roxy Zebek. But another word starting with the letter D that was also mentioned in Roger's speech is the idea of destiny. And this could also make sense that destiny or fate is what the D represents because it is also another important theme in the series and it could also fit quite well in the sense that the will of D is something that is inherited and passed on, passed down. Therefore, it is one's destiny. But of course, the other D word that has been prominent for quite a while now is the idea of the dawn. And the dawn has been present and represented in the story in a number of ways. It's also been an element that has been present from the very beginning because of the first saga, Romance Dawn. But it's obviously something that has become especially important during this current Yonko saga. But it is pretty important that this idea, that this element has been with us since the very beginning, and also that it is actually in fact the name of the one shot that Oda wrote before the series, which spawned a lot of the ideas that he would later use and appropriate for One Piece. And now we're seeing it become such an important concept and theme now. And interestingly, especially now in an arc where we are so heavily focused in uncovering a lot of the world's mysteries and secrets. Now, obviously the most notable use of the word is through the idea of Luffy bringing about the dawn. And in that sense, dawn can be associated with the first sunlight and because of that we can also make associations and connections to sun god Nika which the last chapter really essentially seemed to confirm for us the connection between Nika and Joy Boy and Luffy and I have to say that personally I have long thought that the will of D could represent the dawn but also with a caveat because I've also thought that the D could represent more than just one thing and that the D would also represent the dusk if the dawn means brightness, then the dusk represents darkness. And I thought this could be the explanation as to why we have certain polarizing characters who seem opposed and counterposed to Luffy's entire being in this series. And of course, I'm referring to Blackbeard, but it could also relate to Roxy Zebek. And if we look at the song Bing Sake, which has recently come into focus again as a result of the latest chapter and how certain lyrics and lines within that song seem to be manifesting in the series, Bing Sake also mentions both the dawn and the dusk. And then also with the idea that two sides of the same coin is a recurring motif within the series, having two Ds opposite and contrasted to each other, which could then make a circle, seems to be really fitting symbolism. But I've also thought that if the D represents both the dawn and dusk, this could explain why the D clan were a clan to be so feared. Because if we suppose that all of the D clan members were as altruistic as Luffy and the likes of Roger, who sure, neither of them are complete saints, but they're not inherently bad or evil characters, it's sort of hard to see why they would be considered such a threat. I mean, even if you suppose that the D clan members have some inherent strength or powers or abilities, if they were all as altruistic as Luffy, Luffy is a character who cares about freedom not only for himself, but for others as well. You know, Luffy and Roger aren't characters who abuse their power for their own gain. So then, if there were actually another group of people within the D clan who did use their powers or abilities or whatever will of the D, but for bad instead, it could explain why the D clan became the source of such fear and possibly even persecution. And I've also been thinking of a fun and juicy scenario that what if the D clan are all the descendants of Joy Boy's original crew? And that maybe actually one of his crewmates betrayed Joy Boy or betrayed the crew and then individuals like Zebek or Blackbeard are the descendants of that one figure who betrayed the crew. And that's why you have 
two different types of D clan members. And then this way, it would almost be as if history has repeated itself in the sense that Teach has betrayed his crew, has betrayed Whitebeard's crew, but then also a betrayal of the D clan or the ideals of the D clan who represent the Dawn. Or I suppose you could also see it as him staying true to the dusk and the darkness that the D also represents. Maybe it doesn't even have to go all that far. But I have been thinking that maybe the origin of the D clan is Joy Boy's crew. And I think this idea particularly makes sense with all the speculations that Joy Boy may have been a giant or was at least able to turn himself into a giant using his abilities or at the least had giants on his crew, which seems to be further strengthened by the reveal that Zunisha was part of his crew. And given that we know that Saul as a giant Giant is a member of the D clan. It could be why now we have members of the D family who are of different races, who are of the giant race. But also, speaking of Zunisha and going back to Blackbeard and the idea of him being the descendant of the original traitor, maybe Zunisha actually helped the treacherous crewmate. I mean, maybe it was even unwittingly. Maybe Zunisha didn't even realize. But maybe this could be the crime that Zunisha committed and is now atoning for. And sticking with this idea of the D clan coming from the lineage of Joy Boy's original crew, this could explain why members of the D family are considered such threats. Apart from the fact that some of the members of the clan are individuals like Zebek or like Teach, who do seem to represent darkness, even without that aspect, all of the members would still be related to the infamous Joy Boy crew. I mean, if you think about how Ace was treated for being the son of the Pirate King, or even the shock that everyone felt finding out that Luffy was the son of Dragon, you could imagine that a similar apprehension would have existed for the descendants of Joy Boy's crew. And of course, this idea of the sins of one's father being passed down to the children is a concept that has been explored throughout the series, especially in the Wano arc. And of course, the world government has now wiped out any traces of Joy Boy's crew, but that doesn't mean that the emotions and the sentiments surrounding the crew also had to completely dissolve, and that's why this unexplainable fear has remained. But anyways, I've also thought that this idea could also explain why there aren't a huge number of people, a huge number of characters, who hold the D initial in their names. I mean, seriously, it's actually quite surprising when you think about it. There are a few things that have been mentioned throughout the series that only a few individuals in the world hold or possess, such as Devil Fruits and Haki, especially Conqueror's Haki. But then, of course, as the stakes have risen throughout the series, we've been introduced to more and more characters who either hold a Devil Fruit or possess Haki, or maybe even both. And of course, that makes sense because we are now playing in the big leagues, and so it makes sense that those who can also survive at this level also possess some help or extra abilities in the form of Devil Fruits or Haki. But then in contrast, the number of people who we know to hold the D initial in their name have remained just a few. And that's why I personally thought of them as being descendants of Joy Boy's crew rather than being descendants of the Ancient Kingdom. Because then otherwise I feel like there must be many more D clan members. But then again, there could be more members that we just haven't been introduced to yet. You know, maybe they're in hiding because we do know that some families did hide their D initial, or maybe they've all been wiped out because they were persecuted. And that is all very possible, but at least personally, that has been how I was thinking about the Will of D. But then as a result of chapter 1043, where we saw this idea of the drums of liberation, I've also seen some people comment on my videos about the possibility of D representing drums. And now because of chapter 1043, it does seem like drums is a much more important element in the series, not only because of that chapter, but also when you think about Joy Boy and the real life figure who seems to have partly inspired Joy Boy. You know, this individual who carries around the drum and liberates people through laughter and song and dancing, which is all very fitting to our protagonist. And of course, we did see drums in that infamous panel at Skypiea. And also, if you go back to being Sake, again, a song that has risen as a source of speculation for the series, drums were also mentioned in Bing Sake. But another idea that I have have been thinking more and more about is that we have approached this from a completely wrong angle. Maybe we are entirely wrong in thinking that the D initial, that it stands for anything at all, and that it's entirely possible that the D is actually just representative of a shape. Because what's really interesting is that when the names of those individuals who hold the D initial are written in Japanese, the D within their names 
remains written in English so that it looks like that D shape. But what if it is that the D isn't supposed to remain in English because it represents an English word, but maybe it's because it's supposed to resemble a shape. Now, maybe this could be the moon or more specifically the crescent moon, especially because that is a symbol, a motif that has been recurring in the series, especially as of late where all of these mysteries seem to be culminating. And the crescent moon could also fit well with the idea of opposing factions within the D clan coming together or when put together, making up a hole, making up a circle, or in this case, a full moon. Or another very obvious shape that the D could also represent is obviously the smile. The very iconic smile that we've seen all of the members of the D clan wear, both in their lifetime, but also, and possibly more importantly, in their moment of death. And again, in this last chapter, this idea of grinning, this idea of smiling was heavily connected to Joy Boy, Nika, and now Luffy. But then also, I even think that the shape of the D could represent both the moon and the smile. In fact, I think that Oda has very intentionally chosen a letter that could stand for so many different things and could also resemble different symbols. Not only to just keep us on our toes and keep speculating as to which of the various words starting with the letter D that this could represent or which shape it's supposed to resemble, but also maybe because multiple ideas, these various ideas could all tie in together and actually work together in this explanation about the meaning of the Will of D. But anyways, like I said, this is a topic that has been on my mind for a while, but has also more recently risen to the surface, in my mind at least, because of all the other major reveals going on. But I don't know, what do you guys think? You know, what do you think that the D represents? Is it something that you guys have been thinking about for a while as well? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Make sure to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a patron member. And I want to thank all my patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.